Um, so you now, uh, let's, let's introduce our guest today. Uh, Peter Aldous, Conservative MP for Waveney. Sandy Martin, Labour MP for Ipswich. And Liberal Democrat Councillor Stefan Aquaron from Norfolk. Um, a according to the experts, the Liberal Democrats will now be the choice for people who want to protest. Well, it's interesting hearing the discussion so far because we've always been a grassroots party. So for us, where we work hard and we campaign for local issues, that's where we win. And the results from this last week have proven that to me. Um, I don't think it's a protest vote that changes control of South Cambridgeshire Council. I think it's much stronger than that. What's a protest that. vote, actually, a lot of people say, about the, the plan for South Cambridgeshire? Possibly, and it's always good to have a, a negative press story from the previous administration to campaign against. Um, but look, it's not just about Brexit. We managed to um, field and successfully elect German nationals in Brexit facing parts of the country last Thursday. So I don't think it's a protest in any shape or form this time. Sandy Martin, is, uh, is, is the end of UKIP, do you think? I think so, yes. I mean, I'll give UKIP the benefit of the doubt. I believe that they. Uh, started their party with a particular aim in mind, which was to get this country to the leave of the European Union. Uh, they have uh, achieved that. Um, I think it was the wrong decision, um, and I will continue to say that. But we now need to work uh, for the best possible uh, situation for our country, and uh, I don't think that UKIP needs to be a part of that decision any longer. And uh, I okay. actually am looking forward to having politics shows where we don't need to listen to UKIP any longer. Peter Aldous, in your constituency, there are lots of people, fishermen particularly, yes. who would say actually we do need UKIP because um, we, if there's a chance you could stay in the uh, common agricultural fisheries policy. Well, I think we've made, the Prime Minister has actually made very clear that we leave the common fisheries policy at the end of 2020. I think if we just look back, UKIPs had they a high... very angry. With oh, very, very, very angry, angry and they were yes. quite right to be. Yeah. Um, my, in my view, Brexit provides us with an opportunity to regenerate the fishing industry. We've got a clear plan for doing that in Lowestoft in East Anglia, and that's what we'll set out to do. There are going to be plenty of twists and turns along the way. I think UKIP actually did very well in the period up to 2015 that, and 2017 and 2016 because that was, they were campaigning for that referendum and they won that. It's also important to bear in mind that the Lib Dems were actually in coalition with the Conservatives from 2010 to 2015, so they could no longer claim to be the party of protest. And I sense that the UKIP did pick up from that. Just, just who do you think has benefited most in this election, in this region, from the collapse of UKIP? My guess is that uh, probably more of the UKIP voters who voted went and voted Conservative than for other, the other two parties. But an awful lot of people voted UKIP uh, and didn't vote in the local elections this year. We must always remember that uh, less than half uh, the population actually do vote in local elections. So it's not always possible to make a judgment from the local to the general. I think Sandy's broadly correct, but I think if you just look at next door to myself in Yarmouth, yep. where UKIP did fall back from a very high watermark, both the Conservatives and Labour did benefit from that. OK, we'll move on from there. Thank you very much.